What's going on, y'all? So, one of the things I wanted to bring to you today was an idea that I kind of came up with my measurements and I drafted a pattern to come up with a look for what I'm calling somewhat of a cloak hoodie type of situation. It's several panels that are going to be integrated with this and it's going to mirror something similar to my cloak situation that I made here with the hood. So, I drafted my pattern, and I did each piece, and from there, we're going to double them. So, the integrated hand gloves, the sleeves, only did the pattern once, because I can cut doubles off of that. The different sides to the hood, and the multiple pieces that go to the body of the piece itself. And these are the pieces of the body that I will basically double. Each piece will go to a side of the body. So if this ended up on the front, in the front, it will go underneath in the back. So again, I cut these to my measurements and it's going to basically fall like that. So when I go ahead and put these pieces together, they will make a lot more sense. And again, I'll cut two of these and two of these as well. One of these is shorter than the other. And that's on purpose because it's gonna create a different silhouette when it's fully on. I got the idea from a piece I saw on Amazon and I just elevated it a little bit because I, saw, I was looking at that and I was concerned about the fit. Just because I know when I've ordered things from Amazon before in other Asian origin countries, you get them and it says a 3X or a 2X or whatever your size is and then it's actually two sizes too small. So what I was doing was I'm actually challenging myself to draft this pattern from scratch using my measurements and I'm also going to influence, I'm going to infuse my design elements into something that's inspired by some things that I've seen. So like life and art, life imitates art and vice versa, fashion does the same thing. So as a designer, one of the things I want to challenge myself to do is take something of inspiration but put my spin on it to really come to a solution that's going to make the most sense for me. What I wanted to do was challenge myself to really take some inspiration and put my flair, my spin on it, and come up with a design that's going to fit male silhouettes such as myself. Um, one of the things that I'm also doing is challenging myself with color and silhouette in the collection that I'm producing. So, as I said before, I drafted this pattern from scratch. I took my measurements and just went with the loose silhouette of how I believe the garment should drape and fit. And I will use my mannequin here to amend the fit. Another thing that we're going to do is we're going to develop a mannequin that is my body type. I'm going to have to do that using a video I saw on YouTube where you basically take a t-shirt, duct tape, and you tape it to yourself. You cut yourself, you, well, you take yourself in, and then you cut it out and you fill it with poly foam. But I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to do the initial steps, but I'm going to put my silhouette over one of these that I'm going to purchase. I'm going to fill the mannequin with the form that I make using my body type and fill it with polyphone, but I'm going to wrap it around the mannequin himself so that I become a mannequin, but of my size, because I haven't been able to find many male dress forms around. Um, so again, as an artist, we make the things that we don't have, and that's where creativity truly comes in. So, um, one thing that I've been doing is gathering fabrics from Walmart at this time because they come cut already and you don't have to wait around for somebody to come cut you a piece. And since this is kind of an experiment, or should I say this is an initial, just to see if this pattern is going to work, what I started to do is start with a cheaper cut of fabric just to get a lay of the land as I develop the look and uh, learn how that fabric is going to perform versus buying a an expensive fabric and experiment with that. I'm gonna experiment with a less expensive cut of fabric and then from there as we find that this pattern works, we will continue to develop different looks and fabrics and colors and various things with the established pattern that works for our body type. So this is basically like a cotton jersey t-shirt type of fabric and I know that I want this garment to have a little bit of flow and some ease and since this has some stretch, I'm going to definitely use this along with a uh, 
royal blue jersey that I happen to find at Walmart as well. And I'll line the hoodie with that and I'll also put certain elements to tie those colors together. So this is kind of like a, a Heather sandstone type of situation. It has like little gray flecks in it, but it's mostly like a, it's kind of the color of the paper that I'm using, which is, this is craft paper. This is what I'm doing my patterns off of. And out of this paper from Dick Book, but I have a large roll. Again, Amazon is one of my go-to places for finding a lot of the things I need for my design supplies. So, um, what I was doing was drawing the patterns on this paper, and then when I found that they work, I move them to this because it's a little bit more resilient, and I'll be basing a lot more of my patterns off of this type of paper because it has more of a durability than this paper here. But this has a translucency that I need to kind of see a little bit of either the table or my markings, etc. So basically what I'm gonna do, since I've already established my pattern, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the bigger body pieces with the pattern. So I usually lay those out and I try to line them up with the grain. It's important to line your pattern up with the grain because your cut of the pattern with the grain will make the most sense and the pattern the fabric will do different things vertically. So in that, I know that the fabric is gonna do this rolling here. I just have to be very careful as I do my cuts to make sure I do them properly. I usually start with the selvage edge on my straight edges because that will eliminate the amount of work that I have to do to get those edges clean. So those are pretty much lined up and I'm just gonna start to cut my pattern. Pattern on top, fabric on bottom because we're cutting, we don't want to cut the pattern too much and we don't want to nip these edges too much because this is gonna get reused. I'm also being a little hood and using uh, various things as pattern weights. I have some washers, but I can't find them right now. And, you know, we may do what we got. I stretch the fabric slightly. Continue cutting along the edge of the pattern that I've established. And it's important to you to have the proper tools for the job. These are fabric shears. These are purposeful for getting through your fabric. It gives you a very clean edge. A I've seen a few people use different things, but for me, I want the proper tools for the job. And these are super scissors. Again, Amazon is one of my biggest friends because they allow me to find and discover products that I probably wouldn't have ever been able to find before. And then of course, Amazon Prime, it's the bomb.com. And again, I left a little bit of room here to allow for me to nip the edge of the pattern and it still be okay. I've also built in a seam allowance on the pattern. And I'm just gonna be careful to go around the edges of the pattern as I'm stating. bigger slices so that it will be more even. Just holding the fabric so it doesn't fall because I'm cutting it from two a two yard swatch. I'm actually taking my time to actually cut through one layer of fabric at a time, even though I'm going to use duplicate layers to this look, I want to be sure to cut each one purposefully. I also have a rotary cutter, which I'll even that up, and also, um, as I finish the hem edges, I will more than likely end up running them through the serger, so the ends will be very clean. And I won't have to worry about any jagged cuts or anything like that because the surgeon will finish the edge while trimming the edge of the fabric as well. So, um, again, like I said before, right, proper tools for the job. Put that down now. Let's go ahead and focus on getting it. Cut 
and that kind of gives you a look or a visual of what this is going to look like. I'm going to incorporate a hood, so I will have to kind of cut this out, this neckline a little differently, but this is one of the long panels, and as you can see, it has that type of flow that we want. So, of the many pieces I have to do for this look, one of them is done. Um, like I said before, I could have technically folded the fabric, therefore, and just cut once, but I want to be very deliberate as I cut this because I want to have the control of knowing each one of them is cut versus just doing two at a time. When we get to the sleeves and the other parts, like the hood and things of that nature, I'll be able to do two layers at a time because I would have gotten the inflow of the work and I'll already be ready for that. So, of the panels, one of four is done. So one thing that I do is I label my pieces with masking tape and chalk, just so that I know when I go in for construction, I have the right piece on the right side and the multiple pieces that goes with it. I'm gonna run all of this through my sewing machine that my baby bought me for our anniversary. It's a Project Runway Limited Edition. It has multiple stitches built in, but I'm gonna be basically working on the basic stitches and for areas that need to be reinforced, I'll do this kind of overlock situation here. And for the areas that have the most stretch, we'll be doing some of these zigzags just to ensure that the fabric has enough ability to move through. So I'm just gonna go ahead and label now. It's nothing too interesting about that. But um, I either use white out on the masking tape or chalk. Chalk can kind of get rubbed off as I stack things up. But um, I, when I'm in flow of creating, I'll basically do a heap of patterns and then cut them all out and then I'll do my fabric selection. So I'll do things in shifts. 